Hi, I'm Allison. I've been doing assemblage art for around 15 years. I think technical aspects aren't talked about enough, even though they apply to a lot of people's interests. If you're interested in tips, tools, and techniques, or working small, I want to make this channel a good resource for you. Makers are not as different as marketing and algorithms make it seem, and that's an important issue to me. I really hope I can make a contribution to a larger community with this. This piece is called Proud. I'm about to walk through the process of making it. Some pieces I might discuss do relate to hot button topics, so heads up, I'm pretty far left. This video touches on adhesives, techniques for working with butterfly wings, wall mounting hardware, gilding, sculpting with quick curing epoxy putties, and more. Proud was inspired by past generations of LGBTQ people who have done so much for each subsequent generation, and by what they went through to take care of each other and themselves. It also draws on reliquaries that are said to contain arm and hand bones of saints. It's got a lot of different materials, which means putting extra thought into adhesives and glues. To start the background and the core of the arm, I went for JB Weld steel stick and milliput epoxy putties. I also needed to incorporate the ostrich egg shell. That egg used to be whole, but I removed that section with a hacksaw. If you do something like this, be prepared to spend a long time on it and wear a mask to stop you from inhaling dust. Uh, fun fact, it smells like getting a tooth drilled at the dentist. I think it must be a lot like bone. The frame was previously used as a magic lantern slide holder. Magic lantern slides are made of glass and were used to project images as long ago as the 17th century in one form or another. Uh, those slides are also fun to work with. They age very fast in sunlight, but it is possible to reproduce them with Liquitex glass medium. That's a video for another day but it's basically making an image transfer and baking it in an oven. Some of the frames for them are like this, uh, rectangular and openable, and others are meant for circular slides. I found a bulk lot of them once that were written on or broken, and I love using them. So the core of the arm runs past an opening in the shell, and the circle in the frame. Then it spreads outward to give it a strong structure and anchor the arm. The arm was made partly with the JB Weld steel stick. I'll talk more about that and other adhesives in later videos. JB Weld products meant for metal typically have two parts, one part hardener and one part resin type stuff containing metal. Before you use this product, Roughen the surfaces you're joining a little bit uh, with a nail file or emery board or some sandpaper, whatever. Um, and then wipe them down with acetone if possible. It's the same with the paste form, but beware when they say fast curing, they really mean it. If you use a fingerprint to access your cell phone, make sure to use gloves or get it off fast. I also used it to secure the bell for the strongest join I could make. Milliput is a different story. It's more resistant to aging and easier to manipulate by drilling, sanding, filing, and during the curing process you can smooth it with water, a lot like clay. The JB steel stick can do some of that to some extent, but not quite as well. It's sometimes used by conservators to mend old china and ceramics. I used black milliput for the arm because I cheated at gilding and did a layer of gold paint first to hide imperfections. Gold and metallic paints look better over a dark coat than a light one to me. However, milliput is expensive at about 10 or $11 for four ounces. I ran out of black milliput, so I used white that I had left over from another piece and painted that black. The hand took much less 
it was just used to join the fingers and palm. These are old resistors from, I guess, around the 1950s. Modern ones look like this. This was trickier to do with Milliput, but it isn't corrosive to the old material and can be shaped and smooth. However, while the metal putty takes three to five minutes to harden, Milliput has a longer working time of around 25 minutes for me. It can vary in different environments, though. Some joins I ended up holding together physically for almost the entire time. Uh, full curing time is different than working time for both of these products, by the way. Uh, the JB cures in one hour, and the Milliput takes three to four hours. The detour into meaning. All the pride flag colors are here, including the turquoise and pink that were part of the original flag design, and black and brown to honor people of color who were and are spearheads of the movement. Black and brown are now on the Philadelphia pride flag. At this point, I could move on to gilding. That was new to me, and I'm still not great at it, but I like how it ended up here. There's a lot more to it for pros, but I cleaned the surface, brushed adhesive on, waited for it to get tacky, and applied the leaf. I used a foam thing for adhesive application to save the drains in my apartment, and after applying the leaf, I brushed the surface off with a soft bristled brush. In my case, a makeup brush was fine. There are three main materials involved here. First, metal leaf. I got imitation gold leaf because it was much less expensive and I wasn't sure how it would go. Then there are adhesives and sealants specifically meant for it, and I'll bet there are alternatives, but I sprang for a brand called Speedball Mona Lisa. It's water-based and dries to the point that you can apply leaf in about 30 minutes. On to the watch crystals. These watch crystals here on the arm and on the palm, were part of a ball clot that I got off eBay. Usually lots of vintage watch crystals are expensive, but if you keep checking, you'll eventually find a good deal, especially for small irregular ones. I really lucked out and got a few heart shapes. I put a small pool of resin in the crystal and a coat of resin on the wing. When working with butterfly wings, it's important to remember that they're hydrophobic, water resistant, because they have to repel rain and humidity. Be patient and squish mediums in firmly. Also, go for wings that have the same color pattern on both sides. Most that don't will lose their color and pattern, and so will some that do. Sadly, this has included iridescent wings in my experience. When a clear medium is applied, the wing will become semi-transparent. So if you want a solid color, paint it white on one side. However, in this case, resin was involved and that means not using titanium white. It's the popular paint formula that includes titanium dioxide. There are titanium white pigments specifically for tinting resin and a layer of finish between paint and resin is supposed to help but I don't have definitive experience with that. Titanium dioxide will interact with resin to yellow it much, much quicker. Even when a paint not containing titanium dioxide is used, white is a reflective color and can lead to faster aging. That brings me to the problem of aging materials. It's important to be as aware as possible of the aging tendencies of the items and mediums you use. But no amount of pre-planning or research will make it as enduring as art using materials that have been observed and improved on over hundreds or thousands of years. Defenses against this are knowing your materials, especially when you're using personally important materials in a project. And if you're selling things, be upfront about aging issues with potential buyers. Personally, my rule of thumb is that a buyer should be able to look at a piece and know that it will age at least as slowly as the most vulnerable object they see. In this case, the butterfly wing will last much, much longer than a wing normally would, but there's no hidden surprise 
in the adhesives or paints that will make the piece age faster than it looks like it will. Speaking of which, the butterfly wings come from a very large butterfly greenhouse that works with museums to create butterfly zoo exhibits, uh, as well as media companies and other organizations and artists as well. Rather than throwing the wings away after the butterflies die naturally, they're sold, which is why they're all in subpar shape. So watching out for bubbles, rest the coated wing on the surface of the resin. If you're having problems with bubbles, heat guns can temporarily thin resin and cause air to rise to the surface. More carefully, you can use blow dryers. After waiting for the resin to harden, which can take a couple days, uh, I glued it onto the hand with E6800. E6000 is a more popular industrial strength glue made by the same company, but it has to be covered to prevent premature aging. Painting it works fine for that. If the glue is going to be visible or you want it to last for a long time, go for E6800. It's meant to resist outdoors and sunlight. The stone circle is from a clock face. It's adhered with a two-part clear quick-drying epoxy adhesive. I used a Devcon brand epoxy because I could get that fast, but it's too expensive for regular use. I would usually go with clear JB Weld epoxy or, for choice, the Ace Hardware brand. Those all age in sunlight too, but it's all blocked by the stone, so it's fine. Finally, these are keyhole hangers, which are non-standard in art, but are used to wall mount things like mirrors and flat screen TVs. They're tricky to use with irregularly shaped or weighted assemblage art, but it is very possible. That's a video for another day. In the next couple of videos, I'm planning a more in-depth look at adhesives and what I look for when I decide which one to use. I'd also like to do a tutorial on making adjustable chokers like this with sliding button charms on elastic ribbon. I sell those in a few places and I use inch wide elastic velvet ribbon. The only problem is that the findings will tangle with long hair. So that was fun uh, and hard, but let's do it again. In keeping with the piece we're looking at, Protect trans kids, Black LGBTQ plus lives matter, and to the queer and questioning people out there feeling alone, uh, find your community. It helps a lot.